morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Solars and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Saturday the 20th of December 2025. Just five days to go until Christmas Day and we've got some details locked in on the Christmas weather forecast but that's going to come after a very turbulent severe weather forecast with low pressure systems all through northern Australia including the potential for a tropical low impacting the northern parts of North Queensland, a tropical cyclone offshore from Western Australia and the severe thunderstorm and severe weather threat increasing through southeastern Queensland and southeastern Australia. All the details on that, plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's talk about the big rainfall that is coming to northern Queensland. We have a tropical low situated in the Gulf of Carpentaria right now, and this is the first of many areas of low pressure that's forecast to bring many hundreds of millimetres of rainfall throughout the remainder of the year and into early next year. This tropical low has crossed the coast, actually, just towards the northeast of Robinson River, and this storm is expected to move inland and track through the Northern Territory as a very slow-moving weather system. We initially forecast this system to track along the Northern Territory coastline here, bypassing Groot Island and then moving into the Northern Territory around about here. And whilst it doesn't look like much of a track discrepancy between the forecast and the reality, it actually has some pretty major ramifications on the expected rainfall accumulations, mainly because the uh, eastern side of the system here is very much rainfall dominant. And we've got a line of extremely heavy precipitation here in this red outline that's now pushing into our border communities along the Queensland Northern Territory border. And that's going to dump a boatload of rainfall in the next couple of days in northwestern Queensland and through much of the Northern Territory. In fact, basically anywhere in this blue outline can expect about 200 millimetres of rainfall to fall in the next, uh, I'd say, maybe four or five days in the run up to Christmas. Now, thankfully, this is a very remote part of Australia that we're talking about, but expect some major disruptions to the road network up here. Anywhere north of Mount Isa, north of Tennant Creek, the Stewart Highway should be fine considering that it is raised in some of the more flood-prone locations. But anywhere that is not a major sealed road is going to have some pretty significant flooding problems, expect washouts, expect to be cut off and you need to be using today and tomorrow to prepare adequately ahead of some significant flooding in this area. Keep in mind 200 millimetres is the baseline. There's some forecast models suggesting closer to five or 600 millimetres along the coastline and considering the fact that this system is going to spend more time over water, that definitely does check out right now. Now the real rainfall isn't going to start until after the Christmas period. You can see as we push this forecast modelling out further, you can see showers and thunderstorms expected through this weekend, the usual through southwestern Queensland. Some of them could get severe and quite nasty tomorrow afternoon and evening. Continuing to push this out Monday, a continuance of the showers and thunderstorm activity through southwestern and central Queensland. This then pushes over into a couple of thunderstorms through southeast Queensland on Monday night. Uh, Tuesday is when we are expecting a couple of severe thunderstorms through parts of northeastern New South Wales and southeast Queensland, but mainly for the rainfall side of things, high-end severe thunderstorms are not expected, but definitely a bit of an area to watch now in this pocket of Queensland and New South Wales. Back to the general big picture forecast for Queensland. Wednesday's forecast to be the wettest day. We will still see an abundance of shower and thunderstorm activity through Tuesday, but Wednesday should fall the light, or should have the lion's share of the rainfall falling, particularly through central Queensland, inland from the Capricornia coast on the wide bay of the Burnett region, even parts of the Sunshine Coast. Scattered falls between 25 to 50 millimetres, isolated falls to 75 millimetres are on the forecast. Uh, Thursday, Christmas Day is going to be wet and stormy, particularly for central Queensland, inland from the Capricornia coastline into the central highlands and coalfields out towards Longreach, and then scattered showers and thunderstorms through northwestern and northern Queensland. Scattered heavy showers and thunderstorms tending to heavy rainfall at times as that monsoon really ramps up through the Northern Territory. And we're expecting Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday especially to carry a lot of heavy rainfall as this low pressure system tracks over in towards the West Australian area in the Kimberley region. Definitely some very big falls coming through around the Christmas period. I'm expecting some very significant damage to the road network through parts of the Northern Territory and the top end of Western Australia as we get out towards Thursday and especially by Friday. I'd imagine the road network would be toast after about four days of 100 millimetres a day. Consecutive rainfall accumulations adding up to about 200, 300, 400, even 500 millimetres through pockets of the Northern Territory and Northwestern WA. Uh, Saturday is where the forecast gets really interesting. Next weekend is where things really start to evolve. Now, what's likely to happen at this point in time is still quite unknown. However, I do expect a tropical low to emerge offshore from the West Australian waters and get itself going somewhere in the Indian Ocean. Whether it then tracks back towards Western Australia or heads out into the Indian Ocean, still have no idea there. And that's going to have some major ramifications on the rainfall forecast. Truth be told, we don't know how much the Kimberley is going to get next weekend onwards. It could be 50 millimetres. It could be 500 millimetres. It just depends on where this system goes and what it does from that point onwards. I'm then expecting this monsoon to lull off a little bit from Boxing Day on the 27th onwards, just a little bit for the Northern Territory. However, that means that this rainfall is then going to carry over in towards Northern Queensland, and I'm expecting an 
an uptick in rainfall from the 27th onwards. We'll see rainfall surge in towards Queensland as moisture piles in from the Coral Sea here. And we will be seeing a convergent zone type rainfall, which is where we see the risk of three or 400 millimetres occurring in a 36 hour period, begin to arise from Rockhampton and for locations further north, including Mackay, Bowen, Townsville, Cardwell, Cairns, Cooktown, all of the Cassidy Coast and the Daintree Rainforest, and then up towards northern Queensland, that risk then begins to rise on Saturday. Pushing this forecast onwards, the forecast is still very uncertain at this point in time, but now major forecast models are suggesting an area of low pressure to get itself kicked up once again from about the 30th of December onwards. Whether this becomes a fully fledged tropical low or tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria or just a very broad monsoonal low that hovers around northern Queensland, still unsure of at this point in time, but regardless, it still spells heavy rainfall, particularly from the 29th and the 30th of December onwards out to approximately the 5th of January at this point in time. Now, both major forecast models have been very consistent over the last couple of days. I would just like to say that that could possibly be coincidence at this point in time, considering it's only about three or four runs that have been very consistent between the East Himalayaf and the GFS forecast model. You can see the East Himalayaf now calling for a strong cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria. We'd be looking at a system here with wind gusts approaching 100 knots. So we're looking at a category three or four strength tropical cyclone on this forecast here. I don't really buy that too much. Again, considering the fact that wind shear is likely to be pretty extreme in this part of the north, in this part of the Gulf of Carpentaria at this time of the year. And also the fact that the forecast models can throw out some pretty wacky situations and scenarios at this point in time. So taking this one with a very heavy pinch of salt, but again, cross-referencing it between major forecast models, there's going to be a tropical low of some point, uh, either in the Coral Sea, over the uh, uh, Cape York Peninsula, or into the Gulf of Carpentaria. And wherever this system is, it just spells extremely heavy precipitation for the north and far north Queensland coastlines. And you can see that reciprocated into the rainfall forecast right now. Major rainfall, rainfall accumulations are expected from the 29th of December onwards. And you can see some extremely high end rainfall accumulations expected around the development of a tropical cyclone or a tropical low here into the Gulf of Carpentaria. But the forecast that I would buy more times over the GFS forecast here from the Eastern Blue Earth, you can see some big time rainfall accumulations stacking themselves up on the North Queensland coastline. So I hope this now begins to paint a clear picture. In terms of precise rainfall predi uh, predictions for any one location, it's still very much unknown, and those are the details that we're going to have to talk about day by day, especially considering the complex nature of this weather event here, because it is going to be very much tropical low in nature, but multiple tropical lows interacting with an intensifying monsoon. It's a headache, that's for sure. Um, but in terms of the bigger picture, we're looking at widespread falls now between 200 to 300 millimetres over the next 14 days, with, the, with room for isolated rainfall accumulations now approaching six or 700 millimetres in a few spots, particularly around the Gulf of Carpentaria, but also through the North Queensland coastline here around the Hinchbrook National Park. I don't know why this is zooming out so much, but I hope that paints the picture that some big time rainfall accumulations are now very much on the cards and you need to watch this space very, very closely. We could be seeing some half decent conditions rise for severe thunderstorm potential. And you can see that here on the instability forecast. There are some re respectable numbers here pushing into the 3000s through northeastern New South Wales and southeastern Queensland. Dew points will be no problem for these thunderstorms as well. 24 pushing 25 in a few spots here. A good dry line just next to the coastline as well. Very warm temperatures expected into the 30s through southeastern Queensland. But it's just too much of a moisture laden atmosphere. I know moisture is sometimes oh, more often than not a great thing for these thunderstorms, but the atmosphere. Is what, we, is, is what we consider to be saturated, which means there's just too much going on there for high and severe thunderstorm activity to get itself going. And not to mention the fact that wind shear is also less than ideal for these severe thunderstorms. You can see our wind shear values here, about 30 to 35 knots. It's not great. And considering that the setup is you know, not the best. It, it's just not ideal right now for, for severe thunderstorm potential for a whole magnitude of reasons. But again, considering the fact that wind shear is now back up above 30 knots, that could change on Tuesday, does remain a day to watch for severe thunderstorm potential. It was looking bad. It is now looking a little bit better for severe thunderstorm potential across southeast Queensland. So it's definitely a day to keep an eye on. But anyways, southeast Queensland, the only real risk in the forecast is those thunderstorms. Apart from that, it is just uh, stock standard stuff, business as usual, as you would expect for this time of the year. We do have another thunderstorm chance that I've had brought to my attention on Thursday, Christmas Day. Again, we do have some pretty extensive convective available potential energy spreading itself through southeast Queensland. We'll also have a southeasterly trigger come through, and of course, this being on Christmas is going to have a little bit of attention, that's for sure. And our 400 HPA winds here, which is where our bulk wind shear is kind of averaged out, is about 40 knots. That's indicative of supercell thunderstorm development. It does, does look like the atmosphere might be a little bit too dry for thunderstorms to get itself going, but 
But then again, if we have a look at our dew points, particularly around the surface level here, dew points of around 22 to 23 degrees, the thunderstorms will have no problem getting themselves going in that. And I'm very keen to see what the forecast models have to say in regards to this thunderstorm outbreak here, because Thursday, Christmas Day, there might not be much standing in the way of these severe thunderstorms. Again, I don't want to be inciting panic here, but watch this space closely. Thursday may turn out to be a pretty significant day for severe thunderstorm potential. I mean, all the ingredients are there. The fact that we aren't seeing severe thunderstorms actually on the forecast modeling here is a bit interesting. Thursday remaining a day to watch, and I'll keep tabs on this situation here because something could get itself going. It would not be conceivable for something to get itself going. Now, the more immediate threat of significant severe thunderstorms lies in southeastern Australia. This is a big one. Sunday is the biggest severe thunderstorm potential that I've seen in Victoria, especially for a couple of years now. Same deal with New South Wales. We are expecting some very much big time severe thunderstorms to roll on through. So the situation is a low pressure system in the Great Australian Bind is then expected to track itself over in towards Victoria and South Australia. We're expecting this system to make its passage through uh, from about Saturday morning onwards into the South Australia and then through Sunday afternoon onwards through Victoria. And it's expected to cut across the central parts of each state. Now, what's going to happen before this is we're going to see a frontal system and then ahead of that frontal system, severe thunderstorm activity. Lots and lots of lightning is expected. Extremely strong wind gusts between 90 to 125 kilometers an hour are also expected. And plenty of dry lightning strikes and maybe some fire ignitions are also a possibility. Now, considering that New South Wales is currently in one of the worst heat waves so far this summer season, we're expecting Sunday to be no different. And today, even by extension, is going to be no different temperature wise. You can see temperatures through parts of New South Wales rising well and truly into the th uh, 40s as we get out towards Sunday afternoon and evening, particularly through the Hunter region. We're looking at these temperatures getting very much elevated. And whilst this doesn't play much into the thunderstorm forecast for New South Wales and Victoria, the, uh, those warm temperatures coupled with some extremely strong wind gusts ahead of this frontal system are going to cause all sorts of bad news for our fireys and for our fire services through either parts of the state. Wind gusts approaching 30 to 40 knots ahead of these thunderstorms and within the strongest thunderstorms wind gusts could be approaching 60 knots or 120 kilometers an hour. We're expecting some very strong wind gusts with these thunderstorms and they're mainly going to be a wind threat but we're also going to be seeing some pretty significant rainfall accumulations as a result out of these and you can see on the convective forecast modeling here suggesting some heavy rainfall with northern Victoria likely to be the most significantly impacted by severe thunderstorms activity. Now this, this includes areas north of Shepparton, so including Namurka across towards Albury, Wodonga, Kuriong, and then through parts of the Gippsland National Park as well, and into the Victorian Alps and Highlands towards the north of Mansfield across to Omeo. Some very significant thunderstorm activity is also possible over the border into southern New South Wales, Hay, Griffith, Urana, uh, Wagga Wagga, even up towards Hilston, Ivanhoe, and even as far north as Broken Hill, there's a potential for some significant thunderstorm activity, which then through Sunday afternoon and evening will carry over into towards central New South Wales around Dubbo, Parks and Orange, and then across in towards eastern New South Wales through Sydney and the Hunter region late Sunday night. And that should take the edge of those temperatures, but still a very warm day is expected through parts of New South Wales in the run up towards these thunderstorms here on Sunday. Let's talk about our Christmas weather forecast through southeastern Australia whilst we're here. It is a better pitch than what we're going to be looking at here in the next couple of days, that's for sure. You can see a large area of high pressure establishing itself in the bite. Now, this is going to bring a couple of areas of cooler winds and cooler weather through parts of Tasmania. The west coast may see a few showers and maybe even some snow above 1,500 metres in Tasmania. I've seen a couple of reports of a white Christmas, but I really don't put much weight on that. I don't think that we're going to be seeing a white Christmas in Tasmania unless you are extremely elevated through parts of the cradle Valley National Park or maybe into the southwest wilderness regions as well. Some strong wind gusts also forecast through the bite as well as you would expect with this uh, Bass Strait system here or this Great Australian Bite system and this will carry over in towards uh, New South Wales as well. We'll see these onshore winds here keeping temperatures a little bit cooler through much of the New South Wales coastline. Sydney expecting a top of about 25, Melbourne expecting a top of about 18 and that is because these winds are going to keep things cooler. But as it is for this time of the year, once these winds hit those desert areas, particularly through central New South Wales, Western New South Wales and then into towards South Australia, they will superheat and we're expecting some warm temperatures to then develop north of this line here. And these temperatures will rise into the 40s through a few locations and it will be a stark contrast between cooler spots closer to the coastline and warmer spots further inland. It will also get quite gusty. So again, another strong fire danger running through parts of South Australia and New South Wales, particularly in forested areas as we head out through Christmas. This is going to carry over into the Northern Territory. Anyway, south of this line here is expecting an absolute scorcher as we will see that cloud activity 
in that rainfall towards the north this line keep those temperatures a little bit cooler 30s are turning into 40s south of this line and another place for 40 degree temperatures is going to be southwestern wa as we will get to in just a second with that tropical cyclone offshore a west coast trough is setting itself up right now and that's going to build over the next couple of days christmas eve is going to go into the high 30s christmas day could it tickle 40 degrees and with this west coast trough very far offshore we're going to be seeing strong northerly winds bring at this heat from the desert regions of western australia properly into southwestern wa and that includes perth with a top of 42 degrees now on the cards for perth that's the unofficial forecast the official forecast right now from bomb is suggesting a top of 40 degrees extremely hot one of the warmest christmas days that we've had on record i'm actually going to go through a bunch of records today and see if this is or if it has got the potential 2025 has the potential to become our warmest christmas day on record and the reason for that is no surprise. Tropical cyclones offshore. In fact, tropical cyclones around at Christmas Island, would you believe it, at this time of the year. They're no major threat to the West Australian mainland, of course, but we may be seeing some strong wind gusts and heavy rainfall through parts of Christmas Island here and also on the Cocos Keeling Islands through Boxing Day, uh, through Christmas Eve out towards Boxing Day, including on Christmas Day. This system here is below cyclone status, but I believe it's going to get upgraded later today. Still a tropical low 05U. We've been tracking this one for the last two or maybe two and a half weeks or something. This one been kicking around for the majority of December. It's expected to track off in a general west southwesterly direction here in a bearing of about 260 degrees, which will take it just south of the Cocos Keeling Islands on the 24th of December, but still bringing some strong wind gusts. It may get to Category 1 status beforehand. In fact, it's pretty much likely to get towards Category 1 status later today, and then it could get to Category 2 status by the time it passes south of the Cocos Keeling Islands, and then from that point onwards, it could potentially get to Category 3 status as well. But we'll keep an eye on this system here. Definitely has a red hot shot at doing so. It's not expected to be a West Australian mainland threat though, so it's not really a system that mainland uh, people have to be worried about at this point in time. But anyways, that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update, a detailed pack one. And of course, at this time of the year, twice daily updates are imperative to get the forecast out as it is ever changing. So I'll have another update later this afternoon. If you have enjoyed this forecast update, then please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. The support lately has been massively appreciated and these videos are are just going to get longer and longer and longer as there is more and more detail to be unpacking across Australia, particularly as we head out through the wet season. In fact, I was thinking, how did I get my videos to 20 minutes long uh, back in January or February of 2025? And I'm thinking about recording them right now. And I'm like, yeah, this video is going to get close to 20 minutes unless I speed talk. So I will try and keep things a little bit slower, a little bit shorter and sweeter and a little bit general unless I've got the details. But when this big rainfall does start talking, expect these videos to come out like movies. Anyways, that is going to do it for me for now. A massive thank you to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them. And of course, they are the reason that the lights stay on here. Enjoy the Christmas period. Double demerits are in place through many major Australian cities. So drive safely, enjoy the festive season, and make sure you're ready for heavy rainfall if you are up in the north. And some thunderstorms through Victoria. But that's going to do it for me today. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye. <laughs>